I'm super excited to actually have one of my mentors that's been helping me through, you know, setting up my own brand and setting up, you know, how to connect with my clientele. So I have Derek here who has been doing this for, how many years have you been doing this, Derek? 100 years. 100 years. I've been doing this for, for a very long time and I've got him on my channel to talk all things in terms of business and, and go through sales, marketing, negotiating skills so that you, if you're someone that's starting a business or you know you were trying to connect better, not just socially but within within your companies, then we're going to cover all of these in, in this video and give you some amazing things you can put into practice. So I'm very excited to get your point of view, Derek, and, and get those amazing little nuggets of information that will transform how you're you know approaching creating your brand and creating your offers that are going to change the way that you're connecting with your audience i think one of the most amazing lessons that i've got from you just recently uh, with us uh, talking is defining who that target audience is and i really want to start with that because for so long and this is something that you might be doing yourselves i was certainly doing this and you know, when you make that realization, the connection that you've been looking at it in the wrong perspective, suddenly it changes and, and now you can, you know, start to pave out a path that's going to work better for you so that you get the results that you're wanting to. And maybe you're frustrated because you're not getting them. And what that was for me is when you define that, that target demographic, instead of thinking of it in terms of age, in terms of, you know, young, like 20s or whatever it is for you in your, your industry, you know, or above 30, which is how I was viewing it. Think about it more with what lifestyle they have, because you could have an 18 year old that is ambitious and ready to rock and roll and, and executing. And you could have an 18 year old that's going out partying every weekend and doing jack shit. And I find that has been one of the most powerful lessons that I've learned from you, Derek. So I would love to hear your opinion on, you know, not just, you know, the marketing, but, you know, that whole sales and how you define, you know, if, if, if um, anyone's starting their, their company or a business, how would they even go about that? How would they differentiate themselves from someone else in their industry? We'll go in reverse order. I think that the differentiation that you're talking about is like you can't be everything to everybody. And if you try to get along with everybody, if you try to, to sell every fucking human in the, the world, your product or program or service, that well, it, it's just muddled then. Then you're, you don't have a target market. If your target market is everyone on earth, then nobody gives a shit. <laughs> it's not going to be sufficiently compelling that anybody gives a shit at all. Every human is so absorbed with themselves or so focused on their, their little wants or needs or perceived wants or perceived needs that they just don't care. you you, you got to cut through the shit. you got to really have a, a brand message that cuts through the shit, gets somebody's attention, you have to let them know rather rapidly, why is it in their best interest to participate with your brand? Why is it in their best interest that they need to work with this person? They need the product, the service, etc., that that person could provide them. And you know, the, the only way to do that is just through goddamn sheer, sheer selfishness. That If it's not clear that you, you can offer tremendous more value than what you're asking, I don't know, you, know, you don't want to participate in those, those brands. You don't, want to, you don't want to spend money on stuff that, you know, in economics, I'd call it a consumer surplus. And just you know, very loosely, I, I think to myself, you can pick up whatever metric you want to, but th this is not an aspirational thing. It's not what a, it's not some woo woo. It's just like, well, you know, just realistically, like, how much of a consumer surplus can you provide that you're very enticing to, you know, a, to many people, but you're also making sure that you're being well rewarded and well compensated for your efforts. And I, I just kind of came with the ratio of like, I, I think that you you should create enough value that you're charging about thirty percent of that value. So mm -hmm. you know, for instance. So, you know, I sell a lot of programs for about $3,000. You know, I, I want that to be a $10,000 experience for the, the normal client that comes, for the average client that comes. I want them to be, to be like, you know, damn, this. clearly I got $10,000 in value from that program. Would, it would have been delighted to pay $10,000, and it, it would have been worth it for $10,000. Uh, it's amazing that I got it for $3,000. And you know, when you do that with somebody, you need to let the other person capture a lot of consumer surplus. So they're fucking happy. You know, you, you, mm. you, instead of consumer surplus, to say this in human language instead of economist language, is that you can think of it as happiness points. You know, How many happiness points did they get for their money? What would they have paid for the thing? And think of, think of what an iPhone is. And an iPhone is a device that, you know, my phone costs $1,000. You know, A lot of people are paying $1,000 sounds like a lot of damn money for a phone. But if your alternative was like the $1,000 phone or like a $20 flip phone, I mean, you can go to the store and buy a $20 flip phone why are people paying 50 times as much to have the iPhone or a fancy Samsung phone, et cetera, you know? It provides such a surplus that if the options were, 
they wouldn't only pay 50 times more. There's a subset of people that if the damn phone costs, if your options were like $20 phone or a $5,000 phone, would you go to a flip phone or would you figure out how to get the five grand for the iPhone? Yeah, you would see the value in it. I think uh, another point that comes up is, and I see you do this and you do it so well, right? And it's so genuine. And I think a lot of people in business, they go about this in the wrong way, but the connection, right? It's like, if you value your coaching or your program at 10 grand versus you know $20, there's a reason for that. And one of the missing links, which I've definitely learned from being mentored by you, Derek, is connecting with your audience. Right, opening them up and making them realize that the investment of getting that money is actually half of the value that you're getting. Like that's, that's one of the biggest lessons. I remember when I first started this and I, I did this program and you know, I was like, oh yeah, pay for the, the first part of it. Then it got to the end and then they, they, they sold me, you know, they did the upsell. And I went, oh shit, I don't have another thousand dollars or whatever it was, can't remember the exact amount. And I started sort of complaining and finding all these excuses and then I realized, look at it. I just spent five days in this particular program of what it was, and the amount of value was just priceless. So I, at, in that moment, I realized it's not about the money. It's about the lesson I'm learning and the discipline of finding the money, being resourceful, getting that money, and knowing that that program, I resonate with the person behind it. I resonate with how they structure it, the systems that they have. And therefore, it is a investment that is, I'm going to get 10 times, you know, triple the, the money back of what I'm putting in. So I think as, just to wrap back to what we, we started with, not only that surplus value, but that emotional connection. So I would love to hear more about, you know, your opinion on that, Derek, in terms of how to get to open them up, to get them to realize the benefit of investing in a program. I don't try to convince or persuade anybody to do anything. And that, that might sound funny where you're, we're talking about topics like, you know, sales, marketing, and then somebody says, like, I'm not trying to convince or persuade somebody to come. I would say it like this, is like the, the right person, if you, if you know who you are and you know that the product or service you could provide would be extraordinarily valuable to a subset of people, just also be rational and be like, well, that's not everybody's lifestyle choice. You, you touched on this from the beginning is that, you know, it's, it's not just the lifestyle they're living right now. It's the lifestyle that somebody wishes to live, you know. There's a lot of people out there that are, you know, in their late 30s or 40s that still act like children. It's still a child inside. It's not, it's not a real man. It's not a real adult, you know. And you know what? There's a lot of people out there that are in their late teens or early 20s that are very goddamn motivated and they're going to go be somebody. So, you know, you have that swath of people. It's not just age-related. It's, it's uh, their current lifestyle and also an aspirational lifestyle that, you know, how do you make that aspiration more tangible? How do you help this person accomplish their goal from where they're at now to where they want to be? I really made myself an efficiency expert on exactly that. It's like, where is this person right now? Where do they want to be in five years and 10 years and 25 years? What do they want their life to look like? And that's really what we help people with every week, that... You know, the live programs I've done, that's where they come to me to have resolved is like, I know what I want to do. I know the general direction I want to go in. How can I accelerate this process? But what are the shortcuts that instead of fumbling around and being a dumbass and making the same dumbass mistakes that any other loser would make trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, somebody that already did the research that knows what works, knows what doesn't work, and then can communicate that in a, in a very effective, efficient, and pragmatic way of like, do this, this, and this, and check back with me. Then do this, this, and this, and check back with me. Etc. Like that's how shit gets done. We were talking earlier about sports. That you know you're you're a very good tennis player. We laughed about this. Did you just go get like you know one tennis lesson and you were good? No. <laughs> it's like you know, what about a doctor? You know when somebody why does a doctor bother to spend like ten years in school to be a surgeon and like you know they they spend damn near a decade in school and they go through residency for a top surgeon they're spending you know twelve thirteen years. Uh, through their educational process with, you know, teachers and mentors to do that. Like, they could have just watched, like, a YouTube video and figured out that heart surgery stuff, couldn't they? Yeah, I probably wouldn't trust that person <laughs> that watches the one YouTube video. Yeah. And I think that was such a huge epiphany before when we were laughing about this because I played so much sport growing up, and, yeah, the tennis thing, it was grueling. You know, it wasn't like I had one lesson and I was good to go. It was, like, every single day for months Right, it was like you know, eight hours on the court, and then like recovering, and then back out there repetitively, consistently developing that skill set. So it was an auto response, and you know, I think you know people don't view that with their own business. They don't put the same amount of consistent practice in, and that's where you get the the best results is when you put that effort in. 
You know, circling back to the, you know, I'll call it target market of identifying, you know, who you are, what's the service or product that you could provide that would be extraordinarily useful for someone, and then defining who that someone is. What, what is that target market? What is the pain point that you're resolving for somebody that it would be extraordinarily valuable for them to participate in what you're doing to, for them to work with you? Again, you can't be everything to everybody. You have to say, what am I good at? Who's out there in the world that's experiencing a real problem or a real frustration that's you know, sufficiently psychologically painful that they, they're aware that they need help. They're aware that it's a problem. They're aware that this sucks and to be open-minded to get help. You know, if they knew that you know, this person is sincere, they're not full of shit, they could actually help me. If I invested my resources, my, my time, a financial commitment, etc., and I executed on the, the information or the guidance that, that that coach, that mentor could provide me, I would get the fucking result. Mm. I would get the fucking result. Define who that is. Like, who can you fucking help to, to accomplish that? And how would you get to those people? I don't want to spend any time, and I really strongly suggest that, that nobody else hearing this does, that, like, you're not trying to convince somebody who's not your target market to be your target market. You wouldn't convince a rock to try to be a tree or, or so on. It's, it's you know... It, you know, a dog is not a cow. Just look at the look at the world objectively and be like, you know, oh, these are the sort of attributes that uh, that this individual has or that individual has, different goals, different values, etc. And find somebody that their their goals and values are in alignment with yours. That they know they can trust you. They know that you're a subject matter expert in your area. And they know that you're going to help them get a fucking consistent result uh, at a very high level. And you, you don't have to sell anything then. It just has to be clear to somebody. He's like, you know, that when the student is ready, the master appears. About the time you're humble enough to say, like, you know, oh, you know, I could really use some help with this. And I, I always think of, like, you know, business and, you know, this dating and stuff, too. Like, dating and business is a team sport, man. You, you try to do that alone, you're going to have way inferior results than you could have, like, you know, having a good wingman or having having good guidance, good mentors, good coaches, good good wingmen in your dating life. That's going to help you have a lot better outcome and access to way higher quality girls. So like, how judgmental is a, is a woman when she says, maybe she likes the guy, she meets the guy, she's kind of into him, but then she finds out his friends are a bunch of bums. I mean, she's got to give that up immediately. She can't bring her friends around these people, you know? She's like, oh, false alarm. Oh, my mistake. You know, oh, happy this didn't go any further. And she's on to with her life. Is that true? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Same, same thing in business. Is like you, you have to have allies. You have to make yourself useful to other high-quality people that, you know, a, a client or a potential partner, et cetera, is going to look at you and take you seriously. It's like, you know, oh, the, there's other high-quality people that are around this person. Clearly, they have a, a, a competent team. You know, pick up as a team sport. Business is a team sport. You know, the people that try to do that alone, I'll just figure it out by myself. It's... That's called a dumbass. Yeah, what I find is you, people get into the mindset, like, no one can do it like me, or I can't work with anyone because they don't understand my vision. How do people go about finding or choosing the right people to be in their team? You know, last year I spent over $40,000 on uh, membership groups. I go to, all, I'm a sucker for it. You can say I'm a sucker for it, but, you know, spending tens of thousands of dollars a year helped me make a few extra million dollars. So, you know, I don't know, I don't what? think that's a sucker move, you know. <laughs> you know, what else I did is I, I grew up poor and I, I was around a lot of stupid people. I was around a, a poverty mindset. I was around people that were on welfare, people that were dropping out of school, people that were going to prison, people that were, you know, lived such a poor lifestyle that they literally died early from either violence or drug overdose. So that, that was the context of my early childhood. And, yeah, that's the majority of my friends at that time in my life. And, you know, I realized, like, this is fucked. This is so fucked. And, you know, the only way that could go is I was going to have a similar outcome if I kept associating with those people. So, you know, what are a few of the things, very few, just a little a brief bullet point list of some of the things I did is like, you know, start reading books of people that are living a life that, that it's not that you're envious of that person, that you want to be that person, but there's aspects of that person's life that you would like to emulate. You know, if you're, if you're poor and dumb and you're, you're a teenager and you're poor and dumb and broke, all right, then read a goddamn book about somebody's life whom you might like to emulate and understand what's, what's going on there. What's that person doing that if I internalized more of that, uh, my life would be more like that. You know, and step two is there's, there's a lot of educational stuff on YouTube. Go find it. You know, you're, you're, you're listening to this right now. There's a lot of things on YouTube that could change your life. There's also most of YouTube is stuff that will waste your life. So don't get distracted with the fucking cat video. Don't get distracted with the nonsense. Like, you know, pragmatic things. Pragmatic things that, you know, if, if you engage in a behavior, you'll have a specific outcome. Engage in a behavior, you'll have an outcome. Engage in a behavior, you'll have an outcome. At higher level, it's like, you know, it's not like they had the best peers in my public school education, you know, through my childhood. But 
you know what I did? I wanted to go to private schools. You know, I'm, I'm a high school dropout, which I'm not proud to say, but I'm proud about the outcome that came in the aftermath as a, I was a high school dropout because I was around the wrong people. Uh, I'm also a graduate of one of the best schools in the entire world and the best business program in the entire world for graduate school um, because I, I made that a point of like, oh, I need to be around the right people. If I'm going to have better outcomes, like I need to invest in myself. You got to love yourself enough to invest in yourself. And you know, you'll, you'll understand this, Sarah, and you've heard me say this. I think we've talked about it, but you know, a person that doesn't love themselves enough to invest in themselves, why the fuck would anybody else love this person? Why would that person be qualified to have the best business partners? Why would that person be qualified? How would it be that the most desirable women on earth are looking for some fella that doesn't even like himself enough to invest in himself? Mm -hmm. Doesn't believe in his own future well enough to, to make an investment to make it better, you know? He's like, I'm gonna figure it out by myself. <laughs> That's so stupid. It's extraordinarily dumb. It's extraordinarily dumb. That, that's like, yeah, I, I, I use this example sometimes. It's like, if you had no other information, you had the option of like, you could have like free laser eye surgery or $10,000 laser eye surgery. Like, what sounds better? No other information. Which one are you? It's your eyes. It's your eyes. <laughs> you want free laser eye surgery from God knows who? Or $10,000 laser eye surgery? What sounds like a better deal? Yeah, you can't help but choose the 10000 it, and it's it's so important to realize that how much are you worth like how would you treat yourself you know and, and that's how you should be running your business it's like you have to invest in it to get more back I love what you were saying before you know you spent like what 40,000 last year but that helped you make a couple of million dollars oh, I spent it over 60,000 this year already. I've already yeah. committed six I want a hundred thousand a year I spent a hundred thousand a year just on those membership groups because you get access to people yeah. and ideas that you would you, you, you can't find that shit elsewhere. Yeah, write these goals down. You have to write these goals down. You know what I think the trade-off is, is that instant gratification. We mm -hmm. live in this world where it's like, oh, no, 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 I need, I need the money right now. But if you strategically think about this as an investment, you spend that $10,000 or $40,000, whatever it is, think about a year from now, two years, three years. Like you cannot think in that small mind that you might may currently have right now and you need to set those targets and those goals and then reverse engineer it through systems that are going to work to get you there by developing the team that you're talking about that is going to help you get there if you're going to do it by yourself yeah you're a dumbass like it's really stupid you want to learn that lesson very early on just get that out of your system and realize you can't do it alone another thought that popped up as you were speaking Derek and I would love to know your thoughts on this is you know we live in a world where social media is seriously taking over especially with the millennials <laughs> with the younger audience it's like youtube fame instagram millions of followers and a theme that i'm seeing especially with friends of mine that have these big followings is they do not know how to capitalize on the audience that they have they don't know how to you know bring them in and and sell to them right so there's people with this influence that can influence people globally and, and you know and they're doing nothing with it not making any money and then there's friends that I have that have like, you know, a couple of thousand followers, if that, and they're making like double the money or triple the money than these people that have this perceived value of millions of followers. Well, some of those followers are fake to begin with, but wrapping up that last thought, I was like, if your goals are so small that you could accomplish them by yourself, then you need bigger goals. If your goals are so small, you were talking about people thinking small, thinking mm. small. If your goals are so small that you're capable of accomplishing them by yourself, you're, I can do it. No, it just means you have extraordinarily small goals. You gotta go build a team around that. It's a, business is a team sport. You know, Walmart, Amazon, Google, Facebook. The, the, these aren't, you know, why didn't Mark Zuckerberg do everything at Facebook? Why, why didn't fucking Buffett do everything at Berkshire Hathaway? is like these guys have teams of you know smart people, motivated people that help them with stuff. Let's go back to your social media comment. You know, a lot of these people, um, some of them are vanity metrics, that they bought a lot of followers and they have, it's a lot of fake shit. Now a lot of these, I have, I have friends that have multi-million followers, you know, four, three million, four million on different channels. And look, you know, it depends what your, what your branding is. And some of these people, I, I don't wanna say their names out of respect, but uh, they wanted a lot of followers, but how many customers do they have? They built a channel based on a you know entertainment factor. It's that it's they're an, they're an entertainer. They're not they're not a fucking subject matter expert. They're not actually helping people solve a problem. They're an entertainer. They're somebody that gives you a little giggle for for four minutes or fifteen minutes of your day, and then you go back to your life and you're like, oh that dude's funny or oh she's funny. 
and you know, but they don't trust those people in a way that they're going to help them solve a problem that they're willing to pay them a lot of money for it. And you know, really focus on that. Is like, what is your goal in terms of social media? Is your is your goal to be an entertainer? Is your goal to have a big following because you're you know, oh she's cute or oh he's funny or some shit? Or is your goal is that if that's a business asset, then God damn it, use it like a business asset. Like, how are you helping your customers? How are you helping a potential client? You got to be able to help the client, and you, you have to make it clear to them that why your your product, service, etc., is worth paying for. And you have to make it clear what their consumer surplus is. And another important thing you bring up with the uh, you know, the millennial audience, you know, nothing wrong with millennials. I'm just uh, slightly out of that age group myself, but their their attention span is about eight seconds. And that's not a criticism to say that it's their fault. But it, but it is a, a factual observation that these are people that are really overwhelmed with information. They're bombarded by all sorts of information, all sorts of stimulus. And if you can't cut through the shit and get their attention and captivate that person rapidly and with credibility, they can't pay attention and say, you know, it's, you failed. You failed. And it might have been somebody that you could have changed their life. And they might, have, they might have paid you an extraordinary sum to do so. But you failed to captivate them. You failed to get their attention. You failed to cut through the noise. And this is something that you and I talked about, uh, you know, earlier today and many times in the past. Is that you're not trying to communicate to the 50th percentile person. You're trying to communicate, like, you know, who is the person that I could best help? Who are the people that are most happy and most satisfied and get the most value out of working with me? All right, how can I find more of those people? How can I get to that niche little following? You know, my social media stuff is very small. I've got like 7K. As we're doing this, I have like 7K on IG. Uh, I've got uh, I don't know, less than 12,000 on YouTube. You know, I, I also make a few million dollars a year in the revenue off of those things. It's not even my primary business. I, you know, I'm a finance guy. I make money in distressed investing and real estate primarily. It's not even my primary business, and I, I'm still making over three million in revenue with these tiny little channels. Now, I know other people that have three million followers, and they're not even making one million in revenue, and they have a hell of a lot more followers than I do. And it, it's a real problem. So, like, set that goal for yourself of like, you know, there, there's a lot of people out there, guys. I take these people to dinner, and you know, I got to pay for dinner because. They got a lot of celebrity status, but they don't have is a lot of money. <laughs> and you know that that's you know if you if you want to be famous for something, you know, go listen to something else. I I'm not here to help you be famous. I am here to help you be wealthy. I'm here to help you to have a, the freedom in your life to spend your time doing the shit that you actually want to do, and not some fake ass shit like you feel like you have to do to go find more independence. To you know, the, a lot of people come to me for business advice. Uh, they want help with uh, how do I get a raise? How do I get a promotion? How do I earn a, a higher level of respect and compensation within my current organization? How do I build a side business so I can start transitioning out of my current organization to have my own private organization where you have more freedom and control of your life? How do you transition out of that entrepreneurial phase where you're a worker in your own business and become an investor later so you don't have to work? So you're not working, that you're, you're investing your money, you're using your, your wisdom and knowledge and accumulated skills to seek out the right investments and the right partnerships so you can spend even more of your time doing the shit that you want to do as of some fake ass shit that you feel like you have to do. That, that really sucks the soul out of a lot of people having a corporate job. And nothing wrong with a corporation. You know, it's a, corporations made our iPhones. Corporations make the internet. Corporations provide a tremendous value. I love Amazon sends me packages overnight. You know, I press a couple buttons on my phone or my laptop and as if by magic, shit <laughs> appears the next day. Instantly. <laughs> I think that, that's fantastic. So there's nothing wrong with a corporation. But, you know, do you want to spend your life in that role or could you make a bigger role for yourself? You are the star of your own movie. Is that the role that you're going to play in life is in somebody else's business? Or, you know, could you make a bigger role for yourself, whether it's in that organization or your own organization? Be the star of your fucking movie. Make the best life possible for yourself. Mm. Derek, you're doing a business conference. It's coming up in October. What's actually going to be in that? Like if, if someone was to, to come along to that, what type of things are you going to be covering in that? And what can they sort of walk away with to start with their own businesses? Sure. Yeah. We, we simply called this the Derek Business Conference. It's going to be a four-day event. It's going to be in Manhattan, New York. It's not going to be in Jersey. It's not going to be in Queens. It's going to be in Manhattan, right in the center of the action. We're going to spend four days together. We're going to teach you a lot about sales, marketing, and negotiations. You know, why those three topics? You know, well, I, you know, I could teach you about accounting, too. But you know what else? So could your community college professor. You know, I could teach you about fundamentals of finance. You know, who else could? Probably a community college professor. I, I know quite a lot about those topics. Um, you know, maybe you could talk about those sometimes in the future. And if, if you have a question about those, happy to address them. But, you know, areas that I have, you know, real, real subject matter expertise, 
for more than two decades experience running my own businesses, also from spending nine years in university studying with some of the smartest people in the damn world about these topics, also from building RSD and helping them build their business from scratch to the global leader in our niche. I learned a lot of things about sales, marketing, and negotiation. I guess I should define those things briefly and I'll tell you what we're going to do at this conference, but you know, marketing is just conveying a brand message, is being you know, clear about the product or service that you can offer to a customer, who that target person is that, that would be your ideal customer, and getting to those people. We're not trying to convince and persuade the masses to buy some shit that's not going to be useful to them. They wouldn't even know how to fucking utilize it if they had it. If they had the information, they'd find a way to fuck it up. That's not your target customer. That's not your target market. You know, you got to find a person who is already ambitious, who's excited to do the things that you that you could most help them with, and that person can get tremendous benefit. And you know what? It's going to be your repeat customer. Not only when when people work with me, they don't work with me once. Many of them, they come back again. They come back again. They come back again. And you know, I always make sure we deliver a fantastic consumer surplus. I, I think of it this way: is that if I could help you make a million dollars this year, wouldn't you be delighted to give me three hundred thousand? And you know, would you like to do that only once, or could we do it again? How many times would you like to do that? Yeah. Go, oh, how rapidly? Very, as many times as fucking possible. So that's why I have a lot of repeat customers and repeat clients come see me again. I think it's a huge but, mistake that most companies do. They don't think I should be selling, like reoccurring. And that's yeah. one of the biggest things I learned from you, Derek, is what, you just sell somebody once and that's it? It's like, no. Like If you genuinely cared about your clientele, you would be selling them over and over again because they're going to make more money, they're going to have more success in the long run. So... People want to buy shit that's valuable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a, I love buying shit. Yeah, me I, too. <laughs> I went out of my way to make a lot of fucking money. And you know, there, there's some people out there that are a lot wealthier than I am. That's fine. But I went out of my way to make a lot of fucking money. So when I see a great opportunity, I can take it. I went out of my way to go. You know, I spent my, decades of my life. <laughs> I spent 25, 30 years. You know, I, I was like shoveling snow and walking dogs as a child. I had four paper routes. I didn't have a paper route. I had four paper routes. I did none of them. I just outsourced it and kept a piece of the money. You know, so I've, I've been thinking about business since I was like, you know, eight. Since it I was eight or so. It runs in your blood. It well, runs I, in the blood. I am half Jewish. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a religious person, but my, my ancestors are Polish Jews, so <laughs> this might be true. But when you can help somebody get some shit that they need that would, that would greatly benefit their life, that's what a fucking sale should be. A sale is not uh, about convincing or persuading. It's about making the value proposition clear to, you know, be a good marketer, and the sales happen naturally. The sales is going to be the least emphasis of my four-day program because the, the, the main thing that we're going to work on is that if you articulated your brand message correctly, you know who you are, you know what you're up to, you know the service you could provide that would be exceptional for others, man, you're, you're, the, the sales happen automatically, and you have repeat clients. When you take care of that part appropriately, the sales happen automatically. Now, negotiation is another thing, you know, this applies both to, you know, to employees and entrepreneurs uh, and investors, for that matter. That if you don't know how to negotiate a deal effectively, you're in deep shit. You know, you know, some, somebody else does, and they're going to take advantage of you. And it's not because you're dumb. You might be very brilliant at many things. If you're not well educated and have experience in that particular niche, you know, somebody else does. And the, you know, the, I, I had to deal with a lot of professional negotiators. I had to deal with these people in business school. You have to deal with them in life. That that's what they do for a living. Negotiation is a lifestyle. It's not something that you get to do once in a while when it's convenient. You know, and, and if you have to make a deal, if you're in a desperate spot where you feel like you have to make a deal, the only deal you can make is a bad deal. So I want to help you make a good deal. I want to help you make, you know, for for those of you that have a career, I want to help you. How do you get a raise? How do you get a promotion? How do you get a fat ass bonus check? How do you advance your career and surpass your current colleagues? To, to be at the top of your organization you know, and or to go build your own private organization and, and move up that food chain, if you will, of like having more freedom in your life, more financial freedom, more freedom to spend your time the way you would want to. I, I don't know of a fucking rich person that values money more than their time. The reason a person becomes rich is because they want more use of their time. The reason a person works hard to develop a lot of money is because they wanted more freedom to spend their time doing the things they'd like to do instead of some fake ass shit they feel like they have to do. In summary, I'd say there's, you know, four-day conference. It's going to be October 31st until November 3rd in Manhattan. Sales, marketing, and negotiation. The sales happen automatically. We're going to touch on that. We're going to work on that. The sales are going to happen. The marketing and the negotiation part are the important things. You used the word connection earlier, and it's the right word. How do you connect with the right people? How do you communicate to those people such a compelling offer, something that's going to be so useful to them that it's obvious, like, of course I'm supposed to go participate in that. Of course I need to work with this person. Of course, I need the, that person to be part of my life, part of my business team, part of my arsenal of tools or weapons to go make the best possible life for myself. When you can convey that message intelligently and coherently, 
you know, with credibility that the client knows you care about their outcomes and they know they're going to get great outcomes if they execute, hey, you, you don't have to sell. This shit sells itself. Mm, what I love about you, Derek, is the shamelessness. You know, I hear this a lot of feedback from clients, you know, whether they've worked with you or not. You know, when I watch you, and we're in the industry of selling from stage as well, of, of you know, constantly getting up on, on stage and connecting with people and communicating a message. One of the greatest things that I learned from you is how to cut through the bullshit, that top layer. Like, you have a message to directly tell to somebody and you're actually doing a disservice if you don't shamelessly you know and use that word because you know, you have a congruence because you know your value and I think a lot of people including myself and until I really got direction from you and other mentors is is you have the value and just convincing yourself and getting to that point and understanding that you have the value then getting up on stage for example you can help the audience help that client make the decision to work with you to get the benefits versus going up there and being blase and not being direct so that assertiveness and congruence with your direction and that direct call to action is something that has stood out and having that skill that that skill set not many people have and being taught that has literally changed the way that I get up on stage and and the, the amount of sales or the amount of you know communication that you can get in terms of results just by learning that one thing that honestly I haven't seen anybody else like not the mentor that I've had I've never seen them do it as successfully as you have done it and that's been one of the greatest things that have that completely changed the direction of my career you know, Owen asked me to talk to the audience about this business program this week, and I went on stage on Monday. I sold $112,000. Mm. One day, $112,000 talking to the audience. Why does that happen? I don't want the wrong person to come, and I'm very straightforward about it. I am shameless. I'm absolutely shameless about it. Like, this is the person that should come. This is, you know, if you're an executor, if you've already learned how to learn, you've already learned how to, like, I, I, this is not preschool. We're going to talk about a lot of advanced things. This is for big boys and big girls. We're gonna talk about a lot of advanced things, all right? I'm gonna help people solve real problems. Mm. But you know, in a gym context, think of it like this: like Arnold Schwarzenegger could be your fucking personal trainer, but you still gotta do some reps and sets. And Arnold's gonna be pissed if he spent his time with you to show you exactly what to do, and then you're not gonna follow through. <laughs> Does Arnold wanna work with that client in the future? He don't have time for that shit. And I don't say it with any disrespect, but I feel the exact same way. I'm not trying to take some fucking bum out of his trailer park or some, some loser out of his ghetto and tell you that I'm going to make that guy a millionaire by next Tuesday, okay? That's not, that shit's not going to happen. You're going to have to do some stuff. So I want a person who's already coachable. I want a, the, the, type, the right type of person to work with me is somebody who already learned how to learn. Now, they might be good at business. They might be an engineer. There's a lot of nerdy, technical, mathy people come with me because I'm one of those type of people. And I'm also a very good communicator, and I'm help, I can help them communicate better so someone knows their real value so they can, they can monetize the skills that they have already much, much better. Bottom line is this. You could be a musician. You could be an athlete. You could never spend a fucking day in college, but you're good at something. The person that already learned how to learn, they already have a decent amount of motivation and a, in a you know, a requisite amount of discipline to go get things done when they're no longer motivated, you know, I'm gonna be able to coach that person to have great success. You know, that person is it's not a question. Am I shameless? Yeah, I'm fucking shameless. Because it's not a question. For that type of person to come work with me, they're gonna have a fantastic result. If they did fucking twenty percent of what I suggest that they do, they're gonna have a fantastic result. And I have no doubt about that consumer surplus. And they're gonna come back and give me more money. And they're gonna come back, how's that for shameless? And they're gonna come back and give me more money because they know that nobody else can help them the way that I can. For a few reasons, both because I really care about that type of client. I don't want the wrong client. The wrong client's a pain in the ass. The wrong client wastes your goddamn time. They don't get any goddamn results because they're, they're a bum. I don't coddle bums. I don't like bums. You know, I, I just had that program a few months ago came out, the, the Ten Commandments a Game. It was a best-selling program in years and years and years in RSD. The first thing I said in that, in that marketing message said, I don't work with fucking losers. I take dedicated men and turn them into champions. It's the first line. The first thing that I said in there is, I don't work with fucking losers. And this is the same thing as, you know, if you're a bum and you're dedicated to being a bum, don't work with me. I can't help you. I can't help you get out of your trailer court and make a million dollars by Tuesday. I can't help you get out of your slum ass ghetto and make a million dollars by Tuesday. But I can't help you make a million dollars over the next few years. And you know, even if you're a moderate performer, I could help you make a million dollars in the next decade. A million dollars is a lifestyle choice. 
Uh, now, a billion dollars might entail some luck. A million dollars is a lifestyle choice. If you live in a first world country, a million dollars is a lifestyle choice. Now, you, you might choose to be poor, or you might choose to be a multimillionaire, you know, but it is a lifestyle choice. A person who has a decent functioning brain, they already learned how to learn, that person's going to go do good. You know, when I said a few minutes ago, Owen asked me to get back on stage, and you know, yesterday I went on the stage and I told the, the same audience, I said, you know what? I, I told them I had 30 minutes because I had dinner. Uh, I had dinner with some of my former clients. I really like my clients. And I had a, a raffle where 10 of them won dinner with me. I had a fantastic dinner last evening. I spent about three hours with the guys. It was really, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. They really, really enjoyed it. But I had to go to this dinner. So I had a, a time urgency. He's like, you know, hey, will you talk to the guys? And I tell them about the business thing you're up to and, you know, invite them to, to be a part of that as well. And, you know, if you want to hear shameless is I went on the stage briefly and the, the same people that I just sold $112,000 of dating advice to, I get back on the stage and I said, you know, what do you think the sales were? We had a conversation yesterday for a couple hours and, you know, many of you signed up to work with me in, you know, the upcoming months, etc. I said, what do you think the sales were? And, you know, they, they shout out several, num several numbers. And I said, $112,000. I said, would anybody here like to learn how to do that? Would you like me to teach you how to go do that in a very sincere and a very congruent way and in such a shameless way that I can get back on here 20 hours later and tell you, you know what, you guys just paid me six figures to help you with this stuff. Would you like me to teach you how to make some money too? Would you like some help with that? And then, and then we signed up another 20-something people. I don't know the numbers, more than 20, because I seen, I seen the revenue. I didn't see the, uh, the number on the roster. Because um, it just happened yesterday, I'll look at it tonight. But shameless is not a bad thing. That word has a negative connotation. You should be unashamed of what you're doing. If you can help somebody get a fantastic result, you know, you should be quite proud of that, frankly. That's not a point of shame. And you know, again, you have to communicate clearly. You have to be able to articulate that to the customer. You have to be able to articulate that. How can I help my client to live a better life? You know, I want somebody to come tell me, God damn it. I wish there was a Warren Buffett program. I, w I wish I could pay X dollars to go hang out with Warren for a period of time, you know? I wish I could go be his little fetch boy and just hang out with him, you know? Uh, he wouldn't even have to speak to me. If I could just go get him a, some McDonald's and a Coca-Cola when he wants one, if I was just allowed to be in the room, I'd pay it a, an extraordinary sum for that. I think I'd pay half of my net worth to do that because I'd be able to multiply the other half to such a high level. Just Burn, having, yeah. having that experience being around the man, I know I'd make all my money back and a, and a lot, 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 lot more. Yeah. So, you know... Something like that is so clear the value proposition, like, you know, would you pay half of your net worth to go hang out with Warren Buffett for a year? Yeah, you'd make a lot more fucking money over your lifetime, wouldn't you? I, that's not a hard sell. You guys don't need to focus on the sales shit. You need to focus on communicating clearly, making sure the audience understands this person's credible, this person's serious, they're very motivated to help me accomplish my goals, but only if it's the right type of person. I also, also inherent in that is screening out the wrong people. You know, if a person that doesn't have those things, if you're not motivated, if you don't have any self-discipline, if you're okay being poor, if you're okay being middle class, if you're okay with it, stay there, stay poor, stay dumb. If that's okay with you, stay poor, stay dumb. I can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. I can't help anybody that doesn't want to help themselves. That's it, powerful. That's really powerful what you're saying there because most people, they will try to get everybody and they'll try to get somebody to squeeze into the mentality of being open for coaching. If someone's not open for the coaching, it's like they're not going to get the benefit. You're going to waste your time and a lot of people don't want to admit that. But I love that like, you were just direct about that. Like, you know, having the balls to differentiate somebody who's a good candidate to work with you because you understand the value of your time is a huge thing that separates you from other people that are just giving their time to everybody and, you know, dealing with people that are really just value leeching and not executing to get results. You want to work with clients that are ready to execute, that are ready to take your advice and, and go do it and come back and say, hey, this is what I've done. Where should I go next with this? What are the systems to put into play? This is fun for me. I'm an investor, right? I'm not some asshole that's, uh, you know, oh, I'm a public speaker or a personality. Mm -hmm. No, I'm an investor that in my spare time for fun, I really, really enjoyed being around RSD. I really liked helping the clients to have a better sex life, better dating life, frankly, to have better relationships. And a lot of things that I teach them in, the, in their dating life is also directly applicable to business. Those are the only two goddamn things that I've thought about for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. All I've thought about is that, you know, higher quality relationships with beautiful women, higher quality relationships with competent men. That's all I've thought about forever. And so, you, know, you don't want me to be your heart surgeon. You don't want me to be your golf coach. I don't pretend to be good at those things. I wouldn't be any good at that. I wouldn't be a good tennis coach. Wouldn't be a good golf coach. You don't want me to be your laser eye surgeon. I don't have any talent there. You know what I'm very talented at? I'm a very good communicator, and I, I understand human psychology. I understand things about human psychology that 
people that have a PhD in psychology simply don't understand. You would build the brand, the tennis player brand, you know, <laughs> that's the stuff. To, you, you'd be able to build the brand, not the, uh, the abilities. <laughs> but, you know, a brand is a promise. Mm. You know what a brand is? Yes, I could help to build the brand, but it's got to be the right person to execute. It's got to be the yeah. right coach behind it. You know, the reason that I can help you build a brand is because you're the real thing. You're deliver the goods. Mm. You can't take some schmuck that's not dedicated, that's not motivated. That You really want to help the client. You're like I am at that. You really want to help the client. And you're smart enough to know the more that I can help the client, the more likely they are. They, of course, they're going to come back and work with me again. I can help them on some bigger things. Mm. And, and, and you and I, we're the type of people that you want to learn something every day. I got to learn something new. I got to make myself better every day so I can help people at a higher level. So I'm qualified to help people solve bigger problems. I want to learn stuff every day. I think you're this way too. I want to learn stuff every day so I'm qualified to help people solve bigger problems. And you know what? The bigger problems that I can help someone solve, the more they can pay me for it. Then, you know, guess what? You know, related to the women thing, the more useful you are in life, the more productive, the more useful you are, guess what? Higher quality women want to spend time with a guy like that. Mm -hmm. Higher quality women want to be around that guy. You ain't got to sell it to them. That beautiful women come talk to me. Beautiful women are after me. I don't have to go sell it to a woman that, you know, hey, maybe sometime, maybe I could take you out to a, shut the fuck up, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Just tell, you know, come here, we're doing this. I just invite her along to whatever I'm doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I don't even change my schedule. I just invite a woman along and say, you know, hey, I'm doing this. Come, come. you bring your friends. Who are you here with? Bring them to Come. And I just, whatever I'm doing is going to be more cool than what she's up to. Yeah, you're still going to do it too. You're not going to change your plans. Be like, oh, you don't want to come? Oh, okay, I'm not going to go do that either. No. It's just stupidity. <laughs> no, she can come with or somebody else will come with. I'm yeah. Not, no, no worries. No worries, mate. Wait, wait, no worries, mate. No worries, mate. No worries, mate. <laughs> you want to stay poor and dumb, stay poor and dumb. She wants to sit there, go date a McDonald's worker, date somebody else. No worries. Not exactly, concerned. exactly. So if you want to change that and actually, you know, stop messing around and execute on that, then again, what are the dates for your business conference that you're doing, Derek? In it's October 31st till November 3rd, four days. L let me give just a little bit of structure of what we're up to. Is I I'm going to do, there's going to be homework assignments. Uh, if you don't want to do homework, look, this is going to be an immersive thing. It's mm -hmm. going to be kind of intense. It's not going to be a luxury weekend where you sit on your ass and you don't do anything. It's going to be a luxury weekend in the sense that you know I have pro sports players come in. My business partner is an NFL player. He's going to come help you with some stuff. He made money playing football. He's a national champion athlete. Went to the NFL. Made money in his football career. You know what else he did? He made tens of millions of more dollars in his business career after that You know, as an entrepreneur. So he and I are, are partners together. We've known each other for more than 10 years. So I have an NFL player coming to speak to you about how to take your little celebrity money and turn that into long-lasting wealth. Not a couple million bucks you got paid playing sports. How do you make real wealth out of that? Now, I have a couple of major online marketers coming. Uh, Brandon Carter is one of these people. He's got about a million followers, I think 800,000 on YouTube and God knows what on Facebook and IG, etc. A couple million followers plus uh, amongst these channels. Dear friend of mine, he's going to come help you understand online marketing better, how to build brands, etc. I have a couple other people I'm going to ask to come. I, I don't have a firm confirmation yet, but those guys are coming for sure. I'm going to have other professional sports people, other online marketers who made you know tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. They're going to teach you you know some of the shortcuts of like what do you need to know about negotiation? What do you need to know about how to communicate a value proposition to your audience that somebody wants to help you? Now that that's going to help you get a raise, a promotion, fat ass bonus check transition to a different career, transition to a successful entrepreneurial endeavor, transition to a place where you're an investor, where you don't have time to work in your business, the business runs by itself. How do we build those systems? You know, you're going to have to be a good communicator. I'm going to help you with those things. So what the structure is going to look like of the program itself, you know, we only have four days together. I really have 10, 12 days of content in my head that I'm trying to cram into four days. I'm going to make it happen, but it's going to be very action packed. So you're going to have assignments that you're going to work on overnight. We're going to have group exercises and simulations that we work on during the day. We're going to hear from a lot of guest speakers that I'm going to have. That you, you want to hear from these people. You have another friend who's going to come. He's making about $60 million in revenue a year now, still in his early 30s. Guy's making over a million dollars a week in his online business, his e-commerce business. If you're interested in e-commerce, you need to hear from this guy. That's where most of the money is coming from. This guest speaker is going to be fantastic, but don't come. If you're not, if you're not immersed, if you're not willing to do some exercises, you're not willing to do some, some group work together, these are things, you know, it, it, negotiation is a practice. Learning, learning how to speak is going to be a practice. You're going to have to come do a pitch in front of the audience. So I want the, the people that buy the top tier ticket, there's two different ticket types. You can go to my website and check them out. The people that buy the top tier ticket, you're going to pitch to the audience. You're, you're going to pitch to me in front of the audience. 
there's going to be a couple hundred people there. So you're going to have to be a big boy or a big girl and get up there and, and tell us for three minutes, what is your deal? What is the deal you're trying to get done? That might be like a, you know, the venture capital money that you're trying to raise. It might be for your promotion, your raise, your bonus check. It might be some entrepreneurial thing that you're up to that you'd, you'd like to be able to pitch that to a potential investor, etc. Whatever that is, we're going we're gonna to help you articulate how to do that. We're going to give you a lot of structure around that. We're going to teach you a shit ton about negotiation, the do's and the don'ts. And we're going to put you up in front of us so you have pragmatic and useful information that you can go out into the real world and make money like a big boy or a big girl. One more thing I should probably mention is you do get to bring a guest. When you buy a ticket, you get a complimentary ticket for free. Why do I do that? Because business is a team sport. Because business is a team sport. Bring your friend. Bring your partner. Bring your significant other. This is not a dating conference. It's perfectly safe. You can bring a colleague from work. You could bring your a business mentor. Uh, you could bring your fucking employer for that matter. It's going to be perfectly safe. It's not politically correct. We're going we're gonna to say words like bitch and fuck, etc. so I don't have to limit 50% of my vocabulary. But this is not a dating conference. Again, not politically correct. You could bring professional people there, and it's going to be perfectly appropriate and not embarrassing at all. So I want you to bring a, a potential business partner. I want you to bring your best friend. I want you to bring your significant other so they can understand the journey that you're on and the things that you have to go through so you don't have those frictions at home, so you don't have those frictions with those people. They're going to thank you for doing it. They're going to learn a lot too, and they're going to be engaged in your mission. They're going to be able to support you to accomplish the things that you want most so you get the most out of life. I want you working for the maximum wage. You're not here to make the minimum, minimum wage. In the media, you always hear about the minimum wage. You've got to make the minimum wage. No, work for the maximum wage. Don't, work for, don't worry about the minimum wage. Don't worry about the minimum wage. If you're, if you're worried about the minimum wage, this is not for you. This is for people that they are probably making the, a mediocre wage and they know that they deserve more. And I want to help you make the maximum wage. If you're a minimum wage thinker, don't come. It's not for you. But if you're making a mediocre wage and you know that you're worth more, you probably already did 90, 95, 98% of the hard work that would earn you that money. I want to help you with those last few percent so you can get paid what you're actually fucking worth. Derek, I'm going to come to the conference. <laughs> you know, hearing that is like, if you're somebody that matches what Derek's talking about and, you know, you aren't made, making a mediocre or you feel like you could be making more money and you're ready to do that, like, where do people go to sign up for this? Like, how do they get to this? Go to rsdderek.com forward slash biz, B-I-Z. Just click the link below the video. It's going to take you to a page to help you understand more nuance and detail about exactly what we're doing. If you're a serious person, this is for you. Do not waste time, jump on that. Honestly, when I got to work with Derek, it transformed my entire business plan and I started making more money, right? I wasn't wasting my energy, I wasn't wasting my time, I started making more money. And that, me making more money, okay, it's not just, yeah, okay, I got more money, it means I can help more people and that's my mission, right? That's what, why I do this work. Okay, so if you're serious about doing that, click that link and make sure you get the spot before they're all gone because you know you don't get many opportunities to work with somebody like Derek and that's gonna completely transform what you're doing. All right? You wanna take advantage of opportunities when they come up like that. So click that link and jump onto that website, guys, and make the most of that opportunity with him.